he is from uh, bangladesh uh, hospital which is a major hospital in um, bangladesh with lot of branches almost nine branches and lot of people from the the same hospital they are here and they regularly attend uh, all india ophthalmological society conferences and we are very thankful for that and um, without wasting much time i request dr niyaz to deliver his lecture that will be for 10 minutes Thank you very much, Dr. Ajit Babu. It's a pleasure to be here. I want to thank the organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity, especially uh, the Scientific Secretary, Partho Bishash, and Namrata Sharma, the General Secretary. Well, I'm going to, in this uh, session, I'm going to just talk about, although it's surgical, I'll give you a few surgical pearls on diabetic vitrectomy. To start off, with, I'd like to say that in proliferative diabetic retinopathy, Vitrectomy allows the removal of media opacities, offer relief from traction, vitreoretinal traction, and most importantly, removes the fibrovascular tissue and the scaffold for the fibrovascular tissue to anchor. This is the most important part. If this, the posterior hyaloid is removed, the vitreous is removed, then the eye is safe and it doesn't go into uh, progress into blindness. In addition, preoperatively, if you give PRP laser, or you give anti-VEGF, uh, the eye gets stabilized for in the vasoproliferative proliferative process. And we must know that although visual outcomes vary, but most patients benefit from this procedure. Now, one point of note is that sometimes we think that after giving a PRP, uh, that is the gold standard and the eye is safe, but actually it's not so. Because despite adequate laser treatment, many will eventually go into uh, proliferative stages, more proliferation will occur as you see in the angiogram after PRP membranes have developed. So uh, we have to be careful about that and we have to keep on seeing the patients and uh, do surgery. You see, in, in this particular case, this patient came to us in 2014, a frank case, case of PDR. The patient was lost, didn't do any treatment. After two years, the membranes have formed and went into blindness uh, eventually if nothing is done. So we must remember that we must intervene early. And in 2014, if a vitrectomy could have been done or a good laser could have been done, then we could have avoided a uh, 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 blindness in this case. If you look at this, this picture, you see there was uh, bleeding, pre-retinal hemorrhage spread all over the posterior pole, but you can uh, visualize the intact posterior hyaluronic face uh, over there, and surgery in this case was easy, just removing the posterior hyaluronic face, flushing out the blood, and as the macula was not involved, traction was not there, the eye is fine, and the patient has very good vision. So intervention should be done uh, before, before tractions are there, before the retina gets detached. In a case like this, where in, 2000, in, in January, the patient came with bleeding like this, and then in a couple of months, there was breakthrough. And now uh, the uh, view is absolutely lost. B scan was done, I can, we could see that there is a PVD, but there was blood not only in front, but also behind. So in a case like this, this is a normal scenario in, in dense vitreous hemorrhages. We don't know where the retina is. We don't know where attractions are. And to avoid injuring the retina, you do a central vitrectomy and try to locate the posterior hyaloid and make a small opening in the posterior hyaloid. Once that is done, we try to uh, suck out the blood, uh, aspirate the subretinal blood. As this is being done, gradually the view of the retina becomes apparent. You can see the red glow and then you can see the retina. Once you've seen the retina, you're home because now you can safely do the surgery and prevent any kind of surgical mishaps to the retina. But diabetic vitrectomy is all about membranes. If you look at this picture, when the um, new vessels form, the new vessels are uh, on the surface of the retina. And gradually the new vessels, what happens is there is fibrovascular uh, 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 tissue uh, proliferation and it becomes the fibrovascular membrane. And this membrane sticks to the posterior hyaluronic face and once there is uh, a PVD, then, then what happens as it is anchored to the retinal blood vessels, you start having a uh, traction retinal detachment. Now, if you look from the side view, you can understand the pathoanatomy. And this is what surgeons must be aware of and understand where to dissect 
the posterior hilar and leave the anchoring over there so that you allow the retina to uh, fall back and how to get, get into the planes. Getting into the plane is the most important thing, finding the planes and do a successful surgery. Now, uh, this, look at this case. There was extensive fibrovascular membrane. Preoperatively, anti-VEGF was given. The blood vessels have regressed, and now it's a case of pulling out the, uh, doing a vitrectomy and, and uh, uh, pulling out the membrane. The membrane was attached, there were little tags. One was at the macula, as you can see over here. Once you see a tag like that, instead of really pulling it, you can slightly dissect the tag and so that the underlying retina is not detached and you do make a hole in the retina. If there are places where the, <coughs> excuse me, where the uh, attachment is very strong, you can go around and leave a little stump uh, uh, as, and prevent the membrane. Here you see I've got the plane and after dissecting, uh, we release the traction, the bridging traction. And here there, there was a, a stronger addition. So we went all around and left a little stump over there and, and prevented injury to the retina. So like, like so, you see, we left a left little stump and, and then the membrane uh, was easily taken off, the whole membrane. And uh, postoperatively, this is what the case looked like. There was a a uh, little tear over there, but it was on the nasal side. But the patient has reasonably good vision because the whole membrane was removed, the eye is safe. Bleeders are very important in these cases. Uh, our desire is to have a bloodless surgery. To do that, preoperatively we can give anti-VGFs, but uh, paraoperatively, if we have bleeders, we have to control them early. We should not leave them so, so that you know our view is obscured. Initially, if there's a small bleeder, you can increase the IOP for a few minutes and see whether it goes down. If it doesn't, you can use direct manual pressure by the tip of your cutter or a blunt instrument, hold it to the bleeding point for a minute or so, and most of the time the, the, it coagulates and the bleeding stops. And at the last resort is diathermy. We have to be very careful with diathermy because diathermy can also injure the retina. Uh, sometimes we get a combined detachment where the traction is such that you, we have a tear like here. So it's a regmatogenous component plus a traction component. In these cases, uh, we have to be very gently, we have to remove the whole posterior hyaluronic phase and the vitreous. But the underlying retina can be very fragile and a little bit of traction can lead to further tears. We have to be very careful that we don't tear in the macular region. If it is the nasal region, it is fine. So gradually we remove all the vitreous at all the all the tra uh, traction elements and all the fibrovascular elements, if it is done, then a uh, straightforward air fluid exchange laser and a tamponade could uh, settle down the retina. Sometimes the membranes are very, very thin. If the membranes are very thin, then getting the plane and understanding the plane is very important. Over here, uh, uh, with the new cutters, where the, where the opening is very near the tip, and, uh, things have become much easier and much safer. We can use the new cutters to gradually find the plane and lift the posterior hyaluronic face. And once the posterior hyaluronic face is lifted up, uh, dissect the whole retina and prevent uh, too much traction so that you don't have many tears. There, you are bound to have one or two tears in most of these cases, a small tear. That is acceptable because uh, with the laser and a little bit of tamponade, even if it's gas, the retina settles down. Just have to be careful that the tear is not in a very strategic position. So uh, with the new instruments and the new parameters in the new vitrectomy machines, the surgery has become uh, much easier than what it used to be 20 years ago. And now most of us can do uh, a very good surgery in these cases. Sometimes the additions are very strong. And we know that uh, in the normal way that we do, it will be very difficult to uh, save the, you know, do a successful surgery without injuring the retina. If preoperatively we, can, we come across a case, we plan for a bimanual surgery. Here you can see I've put in two chandelier lights and, and in one hand I've got a forcep, the other hand is my cutter. And with the forcep I'm lifting the retina, which has very strong additions underneath. And gradually with the cutter, I'm releasing the traction uh, under, underneath so that the retina is safe and we don't make a tear 
in the retina. So that is the beauty of bimanual surgery, and it can, uh, at times, it really uh, can uh, help us. So therefore, my time is running out. So friends, in a case like this, a good surgery, we can restore our eye like that. Uh, and uh, the newer technological advances, 3D viewing surgery, this very high resolution, very good depth of focus, and it can really help you uh, see better. And it is, uh, if you have one, you can try it out. So friends, we have to be bold, and timing is very important. We have to act very quickly to save these eyes. That is the pearl that I want to give. Don't wait too long, act quickly. Thank you very much.